Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Bible study. This is an exciting time to yes, be in the house is. of the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's begin to worship God this morning, this uh, evening. This evening, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, such a, I'm so Sunday morning. I'm so used to the morning times. But uh, praise God, everybody. Thank you for t- tuning in. Please go ahead, if you haven't done so, to share Amen. this live. Share this live with your uh, network of people. Uh, this is going to be a great night. I'm excited. Uh, God bless you, Sister Sharice, Mama D. I see you on here, Mother Neil, Sister Amy. God bless you all who already have chimed in, and many more are coming. Uh, we thank God for you all. So let's go ahead and let's begin to uh, prepare this space for the Lord. Uh, Pastor Sierra, if you will, go ahead and take us in with a word of prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Father, for this great day, God. We thank you, Father, for who you are, God. You're so awesome, God. There is none like you, Father. We thank you, Father, for being that big God that sits so high and looks down so low, God. God. We thank you, Father, because as we come together, touching and agreeing boldly before the throne, we come here knowing and acknowledging there are some things that we are needing from you. There are some areas in our lives, Father God, that we don't know which way to go, which way to turn, how to address it. But we thank you now, Father, because when we come to this study tonight, we believe that we're going to get a revelation on tonight. We pray now, Father, that you're not only touching, God, the speakers on tonight, but you're also touching, God, those that are tuning in, those that are interacting, those that will be a blessing to somebody else on tonight, Father. We pray now for Sister Sanaya, one of the youth, Father, who shall lead the way out of the mouth of babes. We pray now against the attack of the enemy we yes, pray God. now father that you will begin to release a word that is stirred up in her belly yes. her heart her yes, mind God. and her spirit man we thank you now for dealing with our young people god we thank you now father for not neglecting our young people and we pray father for every young person that is tuning in on this study god yes, we God. pray now father that they will ha- be able to see that god can work in mysterious ways that god can use them that god may be ministered to them father i yes. pray now that you would continue to protect their innocence father and i pray against the spirit any seducing spirit that you would try to take away god their love for you that would try to overwhelm their hearts and their minds outside of who you are god i pray now even in their youth you shall use them even in their youth they shall go we thank you now father for this opportunity that is not about us but it's all about you we thank you father because we glorify you your name let this be an opportunity where you you get all the praises and honor that you so deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, people God of bless God. You. Uh, Sister Katanya joined in. Uh, Sister Mel, God bless you. Amen. We thank God for you all. If you could, if you're coming in right now, go ahead and share this. Please share this now. Amen. Uh, we're in for a great, great treat on yes, tonight. We are. Pastor Sierra, I, I, I am so proud of the young lady My God. who uh, preached the word on Sunday for our My youth God. day. If you guys missed youth day, you missed it. You mm-hmm. just missed it. And it is on replay, but there's yes. nothing like catching it live in the, uh, in the act. So God really was moving on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he was. Yes, he did. It, he showed up. As a matter of fact, um, and, and I don't want to move too fast, but I will say this. There was a young person that actually came to me personally. Yes. And they actually um, explained to me that, you know, it's nothing like, you know, getting going to the house of God and you receive a word from an adult. But yes. to know that, you know, there's an example that God is even using young people made yes. this individual be convinced that I need to get myself together. And I also need to make sure that I'm in a house of God so that I can receive from him yes. so that I can be like this, do like this. And she was an example yes. on Sunday. So I'm excited about that testimony um, about Sister Sanaya, what she did, what yes. she allowed the Lord to use I mean, her. The Lord used that young lady. Courageous that she was. She was, bold. Amen. She was bold. She preached the word of God and, can and I, she can was I, bold with it. Man yeah. of God, Go the altar was filled on Sunday. It was. It Let's was. Let's not forget. So I'm telling you, God met us there at the house of God. He can, God can use anybody and anything. And yes. he used Sister Sanaya yes, on Sunday. Yes, he did. So guys, 
Listen, we uh, uh, we are so pleased, um, and let's try to get this thing over the hump. I see we're uh, it looks like we're at seventeen. I want to see us at, at over twenty uh, tonight for the fact that we're we are uh, supporting our youth tonight. Yes, we are. Uh, so come in with love. Come on, everybody. Pastor Bivens, God bless you, man God of God. God bless you, man Thank of God. Thank you from uh, New Jerusalem International Church. International. International. Come on, worldwide, <laughs> man. God, man of God, praise God Supportive, for you. Supportive, faithful man yes, of God. Yes, God yes, bless yes. you, sir. He said that young lady preached from her heart. Amen. And she did. She did. <laughs> she really did. So, yes, she did. Uh, Pastor Sierra, um, let's go ahead and let the people know what's about to happen. Come on, let's go ahead and set this thing up. Amen. In just a few moments, we are about to get ready and introduce one of the bravest young women that yes. I know, a woman who has a goal, a woman who desires a heart from God. If she has a heart of God, she loves God so much, and she has a desire and a yearning to want to live a purposeful life yes. and live out Christ. I'm telling you, for you to be able to be in this dispensation and make a stand that God is the God that you serve means that you have parents or a parent that knows how to stir you up. So yes. we got, we cannot thank God for her without thanking God for, for her, her mom. mom. That's Amen. right. Her shout out Sister Marie. Parent. Yes. <laughs> yes. She was so proud on Sunday. Yes, she was um, a proud shout out to mama. Her yes. Shout Amen. out to her mother. So I, I'm, I'm excited about what God is going to do tonight. Listen, use this opportunity now to go ahead and bring your young people, let them sit next to you to receive the word on tonight because yes. they're going to hear it. I'm telling you I have testimonies mm -hmm. that someone came to me on Sunday and said thank you so much that there is opportunities for you to be able to use their gifts. Yes. So we, we bless God for her and we are excited for what it is that she's going to do. Yes. We don't want to prolong the time because we know she is ready. She's ready. She's, <laughs> she's a <ready>. fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So without further ado um, and before I introduce her and yeah. have her come on screen uh, man of God, I will say this, that uh, Sister Sanaya, she actually had a, a shared with me, you know, recently before even preparing for this message. Mm -hmm. One of the things that she shared for me is that one time she was in her home and she really um, just said, you know what? I'm going to try this thing. Yeah. I want to see if God is going to show up. Yeah. So what she ends up doing is she cuts off. She wasn't watching TV. She put away her phone mm -hmm. and she goes into her living room. I believe she said, yeah, she went into her living room and she poured out to God and she had never felt uh, uh never had that experience alone right she's used to being in the midst of other people or other adults but she wanted something from god she had a desire from god and for god to pour out and and actually allow her to believe and know yeah. that he's with her she felt she said she was able to really be relieved yeah. and she was released she was able to rest better yes. so i bless god yes. i bless yes. god yes. for that's, this woman that's beautiful and 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 Want to, we're going to talk about a lot tonight concerning um, this generation, this yeah, youthful generation, yeah. not just the millennials, but uh, I believe it's Gen Z yeah. is where we're at right now. Um, and she has some insight. She has right. she has some uh, thoughts on these things. And we want to we want to explore some of this stuff tonight and also dive into the woman of God preached a great word she did. on Sunday. So we're yes, going to we're going to hit on all of this. So people of God, could y'all please drum roll in your room, drum roll in your car. Well, don't <laughs> don't do it in your car because I don't want you to crash <laughs> right. and blame it on Pastor Corey because I ain't got that kind of money. So oh my God. please don't yes, do that. Do, but I got it. But I ain't got it. All right. <laughs> but anyways, people of God, let us get ready to welcome in our very own youth. Sister Sanaya Matthews. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Let's begin to praise God in the house. Amen. Yes. Sister Amen. Sanaya, welcome in. Well, <laughs> she's, she's starstruck, y'all. Right. She's starstruck. How you feeling? Good. Good? Good. You, you know you preached a mighty word on Sunday. Yes. 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 How do you know? Um, Because I felt it. You hey, felt it. see how other people was reacting to it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she did a great job, everybody. She did. You she you did. all should go and share this on uh uh or go back and watch it. I'm trying to say go back and watch it yeah. again because Amen. there were some beautiful things that she shared on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And she uh she was with us over the weekend, um, putting it together, uh putting in the work that's necessary yeah. for a preacher to be be able to go before the Lord. She did mm -hmm. all the necessary Amen. work and look what God had done for her. Yeah, and can can I say something, Pastor? Yes. She, um, 
<laughs> Sister Sanaya has such a, a pure, precious heart. One of the things that she said to me was um, so that she is prepared for Friday when she came over to prepare for the message. She came over and she said she had all her homework done. She was just only able to do her, you know, just the extra credit. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a beautiful thing that, you know, when we first came to God, you, you have that desire to just do everything yeah. right and just yeah. want to just love more and more on God. So yeah. I just bless God because she said, listen, I'm going to go ahead and get all of my homework done because I don't want anything to hinder me right. from being able to move forward in the spirit. So I bless God yes, for that. Yes, yes, So now that you've gotten past Sunday, right. tell us how you feel now. Like, how does it feel you, you, you released this word? Was this your first time preaching? Yes. Oh, my God. Somebody <laughs> shout hallelujah. This is our first time preaching. <laughs> Amen. And what a word she preached. So how does it feel after now that you've released this word? Well, first, tell us what the word, what the word that you preach. What was the name of your sermon on Sunday? Um, I preach what is it? What I preach. Um, how long will you halt between yes. two opinions? Yes. Amen. How long will you halt between two opinions? Amen. What an awesome word. So tell us a little bit about how you feel now that you were able to get this word out to the people? Um, I feel good about it. Um, I feel like I helped a lot of people, and I feel like this is something that I probably would do again. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> you're going to do it sure. again. I'm pretty sure, just as long as we are past yeah, it. <laughs> you're going to do it again. Absolutely, absolutely. You you did. You helped a lot of people. Yeah. And, and, and I want people to understand that just because the young people are speaking is not just based on youth. It was something that adults could take in. That was the most beautiful thing. Absolutely. The fact that grown people yeah. were crying, grown people were right. worshiping because of the word that came pure out of your heart, yeah. that came pure from your, you. We could tell that you really felt everything that the Lord was, uh, was pushing through you that, yeah. that day. Um, and even now, because you live this life of, what you're speaking. And so it's a beautiful thing to see you actually do that. So what were some of the responses that you received also, like in, in um, you know, after service or maybe in text message, what were some of the things that you heard? Um, I was getting a lot of good job and I helped people and uh, some people, they needed that. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people were just saying that they didn't have the courage to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, and my uncle, he was saying that he always wanted to speak in front of a congregation. So after I did that, he kind of got encouraged to do right, something. Right, right. Wow. People don't, people don't know public wow. speaking, and I know it's preaching, but public speaking is one of like the most number one fears oh, of yeah. people yes. to get up and do public speaking. Yeah. So for you to conquer that at uh, such 14, a young age, yeah. my God, that's yeah. beautiful. Uh, past Sierra, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you when you start first opened up the message, one of the things that you talked about is that, you know, you acknowledge, which is a beautiful thing, you acknowledge the fact that your mother is, you gave reverence to God mm -hmm. and that she was able to be obedient to the spirit of God. And so can you just remind us a little bit on, like, what brought you to um, Altar Worship Center? Yeah. Um. So my mom, she was on Facebook, and she She's seen a prophetic conference on Facebook, and she decided to go to the prophetic conference because a previous prophet who prophesied to her in the past was there. Mm -hmm. So she decided to join, and she decided to join the church as well. And me and my sister joined along with her. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. So do you feel like now, um, I mean, obviously you may mention to that not to be biased, but <laughs> do you feel like, you know, you are now in a place where you feel bold enough to be able to um, be used by God now that you're here at Alta Worship Center? Because I think that's what you had made mention of on uh, Sunday. Yes. Amen. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. Uh, and, and people are coming in now with hearts and and applause and everything. Uh, uh, Teets is on here. You talked about Teets on Sunday. I right. uh, had a, a great story about that as well. Um, so let's kind of go into some things um, a little bit tonight if we can. Let's, yeah. let's kind of go into it. I, I remember on Sunday you opened up with that testimony uh, and your, your, the message of how long will you halt between two opinions. And you shared with us that experience of how you were uh, having – you know, a different opinion and you were kind of not knowing what you wanted to eat and all of that. Can you kind of share that with the people today, uh, tonight? Share that testimony with them. Um, so my testimony was when I couldn't um, make a decision for myself and other people had to make it for me. Yeah. So um, I was in the car with my aunt and we were driving and she asked us, what do we want to eat for that day? Yeah. And me, my cousin, my sister, we were all in the car and um, 
I knew that I was hungry and I knew that I wanted something to eat, but I knew that I did not want to eat Taco Bell, Wendy's, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I still wasn't sure what I wanted to eat. But my cousin, my sister, they knew, yeah, I want some Wendy's. And I was like, no, I don't want Four for four was tempting that night. Right. (laughs) So we all ended up getting um, Wendy's and, yeah, and I didn't really want Wendy's, but I ended up getting it. Yeah. yeah. And so that was a, that was an experience for you where you was like, man, I wish I just would have had my mind made up on what yes. I wanted. If I would have just told them what I wanted, I could have just right. gotten that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. What'd you, you want something? Yeah. Because I mean, can you imagine like even now, and I know you may see this now amongst your friends and maybe not so much now because you're e-learning mm-hmm. um, as well as like half of the nation, but <laughs> you know, like I, I think, Right now, um, it's so easy to be influenced by other people around you. And I can't even tell you, like, even now as adults, like, how we easily be become influenced yeah. by certain things, society, or what people say, what people do. And we literally just jump on the bandwagon because of the c- decisions that they make. So those, are, those heavy influences are things that actually have us in between two opinions. So do you have, like, any encouragement that you can kind of share with young people with, like, being able able to, um, you know, not be in between two opinions and how to understand, you know, how to, um, how important it is to know God for yourself so that he can guide you and lead you. Um, for all youth and young people, um, when you're coming to God or you're trying to get to know God more or even just trying to get to know God, um, just come to him honest and open and honestly, get ready to uh, be guided and mm-hmm. just really be like you really have to want God. Yeah. You can't want him like half of the time. Mm. You have to really want to have God 24-7. You have to be serious about that. When did wow. they get serious for you? Um, Probably when I moved to Tampa. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's when I really realized that, okay, you're real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it something that um, – was it something that God showed you or something that happened in particular that uh, that you could share that maybe was like, wow, okay, God, now I know you're real. What was that, maybe that experience for you? Um, So I, I was praying to God that that I would get removed with my mom, my sister, from a situation in okay. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. And I just prayed to him every night, and nothing was happening. So I was like, okay, you're not real. So I yeah. was just praying and praying. I was like, why are you not answering? I was crying. I was yeah. upset. Like, why is God not answering me? And then eventually we moved to Tampa and I just had a better life in Tampa and I got really close to Christ. Like, look at me now. Yeah. She's like, pat myself on the back. <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> look at me now. Right. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> All right, Pastor Sierra. She'll swag surf on y'all tonight. <laughs> you keep it, let it keep going. All right. But no, that's great. I love that. Like, yeah. She's saying like, look where I've become because I've gotten so close to with God. And yeah. um, I can relate to that Same as here. well. Where you pray and you pray and you pray and you feel like God is not answering. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden, when that time is just like right for God to just show you, okay, now I got your full undivided attention. And it's like, wow, okay. God, you're really yeah. out here. You're really doing some things. Yeah. And you know what? Like like Pastor Corey said, I had the same similar experience with my journey with Christ and the introduction that I had to Christ. Uh, you know, one of the things that, one of the same things that uh, Apostle Wells, um, amen, God bless Apostle Wells. Shout out to Apostle. One of the things that he kind of encouraged, you know, our, our congregation at that time is that go and have a date with God because we so very often try to connect with other people mm-hmm. because we want them to be our friends or we want to be liked. Mm-hmm. And so um, I can see how that literally will put you so far away from the goals or the ordained purposeful life that God would have for us. Mm-hmm. And And I remember being in the fourth grade and I had my Barbie table, my chairs, (laughs) (laughs) I had all of that. And I went and got a uh, pop tart. I got a a Capri. I think it was a squeezer at the time. I had Mm -hmm. a squeezer and I knew my mom mentioned to me or would always tell my sister and I that we could only have one snack. Do do your mom ever say you can only get one snack? Right. (laughs) (laughs) So my mom was like, you can only get one snack. But then I had Sanaya. I 
had my little sister who uh, came in the room and was going to tell on me because I got two pop tarts and two uh, two squeezers. And so I was so upset because I was like, well, you know what? God owns everything in this house. Like if he wanted anything in this house, he'll have anything in his house. So tell mama. So <laughs> when, when that actually happened, uh, but that was my first experience where I felt like God didn't show up because I was expecting God to come in a certain way. I was expecting him to walk through the door, to come and sit at the table, to eat the pop tart. I didn't understand in my mind at that particular time in fourth grade that, okay, he's not eating. Does he not like this pop tart? Does he not like this type of drink? Should I go get another drink? And I remember that very moment that made me feel like, you know what? I'm just going to give up on God because God doesn't like me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Right. And that was my first introduction of um, being able to be influenced by the enemy who spoke in my ear. And I tell you this in that very moment um, where I was probably angry as I knew it to be angry at God actually in that moment was um, me building up what a relationship and anticipation should look like when it comes down to God and a hunger and a thirst, because when I should have, stepped away people were still trying to pull me back in church people were doing like you trying to put me over the youth department you know put me you know somewhere in the midst and kept me there and that was my introduction to Christ and when I should have walked away from him instead that didn't happen so I bless God because you chose not you know now um, even in your youth that yeah that was a time where you felt like God didn't hear your prayers yeah. but you now know that it might not come on your timing right. but God is God's time and it's totally different. And you said, look at me now. Yep, and he's always on time. <laughs> always. Always on time. Always. I remember that was my uh, testimony too as well, just being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, I was in a night where I was calling, 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 and I was like, nothing's going to happen. Tears yeah. rolling down my face, still nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Hour later, two hours later, nothing happened. Yeah. And I was literally like, all right, I'm done. And as soon as I got that in my mind, he was like, nope, and then here it is. Right. Like, I'm like you, like, look at me now. Like, <laughs> that night changed my life. Yeah. Um, so young people, older people, it don't matter what kind of people, mm -hmm. don't give up on God. And, yeah. You know, he's going to come through uh, in every situation. Uh, just like the young lady testified, she prayed. Yes, and God did. moved, literally moved her across the state. And uh, that's beautiful, too, as well. Amen. 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 Yeah, so... So, so Sanaya, yeah. let's go ahead and go to your notes. Um, can you give everyone like the definition of halt? Because again, your message is how long will you halt? Uh, is it how long will you halt between two opinions? Yes. Okay. So what is the definition of halt? And why were you telling the people to stop? Yeah. Um, so the definition of halt <laughs> is to come to a, a, a brute stop. A brute stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop. And why was I telling the people to stop? Um, because there's some things that we're doing in our lives that isn't helping us or benefiting us in any way. And it's actually like pulling us away from Christ and pulling him closer. So those are some things. Like I just gave some examples of things that we do that we need to stop. What would you, yeah. What would ahead. you say to somebody who, okay, I hear you telling me to stop, but I'm not ready yet. I, I know I acknowledge it, but... I'm not really ready to stop yet. What would you say to that person? Um, well, if you if you aren't ready to stop what you're doing, go to Christ and tell him what you're doing and why you don't want to stop it mm. uh, and explain and be, like, truthful of what you're doing and ask God to help you to that's stop. That's really good. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's really good. That, that's, that's confession, and that's mm -hmm. necessary. A lot of people don't want to speak the things that they're going through so then yeah. they, they end up in the situation what you preach they're stuck in between right. yeah. yeah go ahead no no that's good yeah. like that that's really really good actually um you know one of the things that i paid attention to on sunday i was like no she didn't tell me to stop being late for work uh, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> can Did you, you hear me us? yell from the sound booth yeah. <laughs> say it again <laughs> yeah and you working at home but yet you still late for work so Ooh. can you pandemic remind chronicles, right <laughs> pandemic chronicles pastor Corey says so can you tell people where you were telling them to stop and the emphasis that you had on us so that we can do it right now i just love that uh, so you want me to start from the beginning? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can everyone help me say stop? Stop. Stop misbehaving. Stop. Stop being late for work. Stop. Stop being disobedient. Stop. Stop being on your phone in class. Stop. Stop. 
Stop. <laughs> awesome. Amen. Awesome. So you know what? Every time you do something wrong or is the enemy try to whisper something in your ear or you just automatically think of something, now all I'm going to be thinking about is the night saying, stop. Right, right. <laughs> you can't eat that cake at night. Stop. Stop. <laughs> You do not be need to eat past nine o'clock. Stop. Stop. <laughs> no ice cream after dinner. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Pastor Sierra. <laughs> Stop. Amen. No, that was really good. That, that was, was beautiful. Really good. Um, so I love that. You know, one of the things you just said was something that I think the body of Christ struggles with, yeah. which is why Apostle Paul mm-hmm. speaks on this so heaven uh, so heavily in the, the New Testament about confessing, confess. Mm-hmm your sins one to another, yeah. uh, go to your brother, go to your sister, say it. Like, he's literally telling us to say these things. Say it. If we say it, maybe we won't be stuck in between two things. That's uh, it. Maybe we won't be stuck trying to figure things out. Maybe we won't be stuck trying to trust God. Yeah. So I love that. Like, you're really saying something so wise just to tell us, like, hey, just just stop. Go and talk about it. Go yeah. and reason about this yeah. thing. Go and she said, go tell Christ yes. about what you're doing and why you don't want to stop it. Right. You know how powerful that is. Like that can change this whole entire country yeah. by itself. Yeah. yeah, I was um, I I was like sinning and like badly, and I I didn't I was, I knew it was wrong and I didn't want to stop. So I that's what I did. I went to Christ and I told him like the exact things that I was doing. Wow. Word for word. Um, wow. And I can't lie because God knows everything. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> can you say that one more time? Because I think adults think that sometimes and children think that they can get away from some, some things, get away with things, right? Yeah, you can't lie to God because he knows everything, what you're going to do before you do it. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, you can't lie to God and you can't keep stuff from God because he watches you all day. So the cheat sheet to sin is that exactly what you said uh, it sin becomes a thing where you don't want to stop it. Wow! Yeah. And so that's the yeah. cheat code to it. Once you get into, involved in the sin, it becomes a, it becomes a pleasure. Mm-hmm. It becomes a thing that you don't want to stop. So no matter what your sin is, if you're making money off of stealing, you're probably not going to be prone to stop it no time soon. Yeah. If you're if you're uh, I don't know I don't want to n- name a whole lot of stuff make nobody feel bad. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just yeah, saying yeah. whatever it is, whatever you're dealing with, it, it becomes something that feels good to us, mm-hmm. and then we don't want to stop it because what we feel is good, but what we know it leads to is not good. And so yeah. she's like, stop, just stop. Just stop. You, you know, if you're not ready to stop it, understand where you're headed. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Yeah, and, and that self um, awareness, self evaluation is so important. It keeps you like humble, and you know you you constantly carry that humility. And I think like you know just like what Sister Sanaya said, like I you know I knew I was sinning badly. Like who can identify that in their youth that you know you are sinning badly? And in Pastor Corey, you said it. Like there's just some things, some sins are just really really good. You know, well, hold on now, <laughs> feel <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feel. Well, well, they feel good, but yeah. just because it's good, just because it's good to you, don't mm-hmm. mean it is good for you. That's right. No, so, I did say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything, yeah. everything that we feel, um, I, I can't even quote it the way I quoted yeah. it before. It was a while ago, but yes, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sister Cherie says that sometimes it's easier said than done. It's really a constant practice. But yeah. you know what, Sister Cherise, I have to say to that, yeah. the reason why we uh, started to receive sin into this world is because the words of somebody else. So it was easier for them to say it. And then it was, it was easy for us to follow in that. But if we would have just stood on our own two feet in the word of God and what God had given us and promised us, wow, we would have been fine. How many of us, even at 14 and 20 plus years, right? (laughs) Uh, At our ages, how many times have we been warned by God and still did the thing that we were warned not to do? It don't matter what age you could be 14, you Mm -hmm. could be 20, somethings and then you can be whatever else above that right more like 30 something okay but don't tell everybody all right that's not what we talking about tonight okay i got a birthday coming up we ain't trying to talk about age right now but uh <laughs> thanks glory be to god so the thing is that a lot of times we do receive these yeah. warnings um and i love this this message that you pulled from um dealing with elijah yeah. it, it literally came he came in trying to warn the people like what you're doing is nonsense it Mm -hmm. you know you're serving something that does not result in anything Mm -hmm. um so uh, and we get these warnings we we receive these warnings but oftentimes our flesh is like "Ah, 
I think we should keep on doing this because mm. it feels good, right? That's good. Yeah. That's really good. You know what? Like, men of God, one of the things I love about this particular story, um, she came from First Kings, the yeah. 18th chapter, and she kind of started at the 23rd verse, uh, 20th verse, and kind of worked her way through the 39th verse. One of the things that I love about this particular passage as we kind of work through it is just understanding that, you know, there was just one of Elijah the prophet, and then there was 450 prophets from Baal. And so I look at that, and as I was uh, listening, to her minister the gospel on Sunday that's one of the things that I, I kept thinking about like yeah. you know we automatically think that because everybody else when, as it relates to sin that's one thing but because everyone else is doing something then that, that might be the very thing right. so we're allowing those things to make the decision for us to choose because we see that there's a whole lot of people doing this so then this might be right, right. and because it's just one little you doing right you feel like, well, I'll get away with it because all of them are doing it. Right. You know, like how many times have you can attest to like, okay, well, uh, there was actually an example you shared on Sunday with um, one girl actually standing up for what was right. Yes. Can you kind of oh, give yeah. that that yes. testimony? Um, yes. Yeah, so sixth period, there's this girl, and we both had the same class together. And we had an exam the next day, and uh, um, students, they were passing around the answers to the exam. And she seen them doing that, and she was like, that's not right. They shouldn't be doing that. So she went and told the principal, and the principal caught the person who started it and all the people who took the answers from her. Okay. So um, a lot of people, they were being mean to her about it. Yeah. They were like, we're not your friends anymore. You can't sit with us at lunch anymore. We don't talk to you, all that stuff. Wow. Um, but Jesus, he didn't see it as that He like he's seen her as honest and from my perspective i seen her as honest as well and very righteous yeah. and she was a great example of what a lot of youth or even adults should be doing uh Girl. being honest and uh not lying about situations yeah, yeah. How, how did you feel um you know she did the right thing but then the response of the people like how do you how do you feel about that because you didn't feel that way that the other people felt you felt like she did the right thing so in your perspective, like, the majority of the people, probably, your um, classmates, probably was, like, against her. Yeah. But then there, you, you notice that there's only a small amount of people that's, like, for the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you feel about that when, when it, you feel as though everybody should feel this way? Like, yeah. all, of, all of us should feel like that was wrong, yeah. but then you start to see the true colors of people. How do you feel about that? Um, for the people who were talking about her or seeing that it was, like, people who were talking about her and seeing her as, like, the snitch and just a tattletale and mm -hmm. everything like that, uh, those people, those are the ones who, they enjoy doing bad and they're not planning on changing mm -hmm. to do good. Uh, and for the people who've seen her as good, those are the ones who, whose God is, like, really, like, yeah. Just everyone. Yeah. But those are the ones who who whose lives are good and God uh blesses them and keeps them like favored and he and those who want to cheat and everything, let's see what colleges they get into. <laughs> 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 do, you, do you do you mind if they see this too? Do you mind if they see this later on? Because it's going to YouTube. So at what point <laughs> if you type your name in on Google there you go. All right. So uh, <laughs> to y'all, y'all cheaters, let's see what colleges you get into. I love that. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's just beautiful because oh it just helps us understand like that, you know, in a moment you get that instant gratification. But in the yes. end, like, you know, the root of all of that is, you know, evil. And um, again, it, it's separates you from God so you know I've, I've been in a similar situation when I was in her age where, where yeah. when I was her age actually in high school where um, everybody was passing around like the test um, but you know I wasn't bold enough like that girl where you know instead of me going to the teachers and saying they cheated I just said okay well they they do what they want to do but I'm just going to go ahead and just do my own test yeah. and then when I saw everybody else had an A and I ended up getting a C, C on that test I'm like I'm telling now yeah. you know <laughs> so I wasn't I wasn't as bold but <laughs> I had to learn later <laughs> um, one of the uh, one of the people asked what did you do in a situation I know you kind of explained some of it but yeah. did she said did you say anything or, or did you speak up as well 
No. Did they try? <laughs> that's fine. Did they try to offer you the sheet of paper too? Uh, to, well, actually, my friends who I said were my friends. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, say that part ooh, again. That yeah, last part. That was good. My friends who I said were my friends. She said it. Okay. Uh, they tried to ask me to do it, but. Yeah, if you know if you're my friend and you know me, uh, you know that I'm like too scared to do any of that type of stuff because <laughs> if I get caught, I know my mom and I'm not. and your pastors, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so basically, you're saying I don't I don't get into that. Yeah. So yeah. that's just not who I am. So those mm-hmm. people you just basically had to disconnect from them because right. they were doing things that you don't you don't represent. Yeah, but I will. Wasn't always like that. Like sometimes I, before I did, like yeah, I'll take the answers too. Yeah. I'll skip the class too, but I had. To I bet you it's about fifteen other people on here that that, <laughs> that feel that way. Absolutely, <laughs> not the other way. That way, what you just said. But no, that's beautiful. I mean, that is beautiful. How did you treat the young lady um, after the whole aftermath? How did you treat her? Um. Well, we never talked, but yeah, she. Yeah, I, I never talked to her before, but she was one of my old friends' mm-hmm. friends. So I was like, yeah. But she stopped, th- my old friend stopped being friends with her. Mm. And I, yeah, I just, I didn't never, I never talked to her, but I thought what she did was really good. That's good. Yeah, That's that was good. good. I mean, especially for you to be able to kind of like highlight that and notate that in your message made sense. Yeah, certainly. You know, um, one of the things the old saying used to be, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And um, I, I think that certainly is the case because one of the things that you kind of like pointed out in the message is that we need to stand up, stand up for those things that are right. And so um, amongst your generation, what are some some things that uh, the young people can stand up for? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. We can stand up for ourselves, and if we see something that is wrong, we can stand up for the right thing. Mm-hmm. And we could, um, like, if we see other people who are not getting treated fairly, or we can help them. Uh, yeah, we could just stand up for the right things and not go with the bad crew and yeah. stay with the good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I, I think that um, your generation is probably going to go down as one of the most active response, responding generations. Mm. Like, we're seeing it right now unfold. So yeah. this is like a weird mix of millennials and Gen Z uh, yeah. coming together. <laughs> but you see a lot of the Gen Z out there, and it's almost reckless the way that they respond, but they're fast, they're quick. They yeah. don't think, like, right right off the back. They just kind of go, go in for it. Yeah. And you guys are going to go down as that generation that's like, we're all action, and we'll talk about it later. You know, right. that's that's where you guys are at. You're just like, whatever, we t- we'll talk about this later. This is what we're about to do. Mm-hmm. And and I, and I think that you're going to need some voices like yourself, some wise voices like yourself to really be that, that reason, uh, that reasonable voice to step in and say, okay, guys, that may not be the best solution. Let's yeah. talk about it. Let's let's come up with a more strategic plan. I can see you being someone yeah. that'll be able to say, look, this is, this is a little bit better. This is a way that we can do this without causing harm, frustration, mm-hmm. Uh, not having to lose somebody. Uh, we're already losing enough people, one to a virus and, and to all other kind of things. So we don't yeah. need to lose no one else. We need people to stand up for that um, as well. And, and I'm looking at one part of your message where you asked the question, you know, what does it mean to stand up for something? If you could, could you take us to that point there in your message? What does it mean to stand up for something? And just kind of take us through that that part. Um, that that um, Well, yeah, yeah, you could take us through that. Uh, just kind of breaking down that part, even with Elijah, because I think this is a good uh, area to kind of bring that up to. Um, so standing up for something means to defend or support something or someone. So, example, how people stand up or support, like, the Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and they some people stand up for Trump or they stand up for Biden or mm-hmm. they stand up for different things around the world. Right. So that's what they support or they defend. Right. Um, and in the... Uh, where we was reading from Elijah, he so he stood up for Christ. He mm. he was there for Christ. Uh, he knew that he had God's back. He knew that God was gonna do what he was asking him to do, and yeah. he he knew that his God was gonna light up that sacrifice. He made sure that he yeah. was supporting Christ and um, just supporting that God is real. Yeah. Do you feel yeah. like uh, a lot of people in your generation are you know willing to stand up for Christ? Uh. Like in I'll just public? say your age, your age group. 
Do you feel like a lot? Yeah, j- openly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some people, because of what's trending and what pe- other people like yeah. or they support, that's really good. They may not step up for what they believe in, mm-hmm. um, just because of other people's belief and what they believe in. Can you that's can you give something um, inspirational or motivational to help those people to come out of the trends and to stand up for what's right in God? Can you can you say something to them that will help? lead them in that direction, maybe to kind of, kind of step in that boldness as you are now? Uh, if you feel like you, other people are going to judge you for what you, for you believing in Christ, or you don't want to say that you believe in Christ, um, God, other people, they may judge you for what you believe in, but God, he's watching you, and He's he sees that as a good thing. He's like, yeah, yeah. and would you rather have the world judge you or God judge you? Ooh. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Can you give her the class? <laughs> Jesus Christ. She's dropping bombs in God. here. Somebody give me a bomb sound effect. This Why? Somebody light the fire. <laughs> wow. My God. Okay. I got you. We, we heard you loud and clear, woman <laughs> God. That was deep. That was that was that was good wow. too. I'm inspired. I, listen, that was great. I'm gonna answer that for you. No, <laughs> I'd rather, you know, I'd rather not have the world judge me and have God judge me instead. Because with God there's grace, with yeah. God there's mercy, with God, you know, I know I have everlasting life. With yeah. the world, they can only give me what they have and that it does not sustain me, yeah. that will not keep me, that will any end that is me I'm going to be a part of that number that where the hell enlarges itself yeah, wow yeah, yeah. Uh, wow Deacon Charles he's he's um chiming in through the altar worship center but he he's uh he said oh no she did <laughs> yes she did <laughs> you he know, hyping he's hyping you up right amen now. amen <laughs> And Sister Sharice, uh, she says, how do you deal with peer pressure Ooh. when there's something that you may like that your friends are doing or watching or listening to, but you know that you shouldn't do it? Good question. Okay, wait, can you really say it yeah. again? Yeah. How do you deal with peer pressure when there's something that you may like um, like to do, you may like what your friends are doing, you may like what they're watching, but you know it's not right for you to be doing those things. How do you deal with that? Okay, so my friends is watching and listening to things that I watch and listen? That Yeah, you may like it, but you know it's not, you, you may oh. like what they're doing, um, but you know that it's not right. So how do you deal um, with that peer pressure? Uh, music and certain songs that wasn't good, at, what they were singing about wasn't good at all. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed that music. That music was, like, relaxing and calming to me. Okay. And it wasn't good for me. Uh, so how to... Oh, oh I like... I, I like what you said. Can I can I jump in there real quick? Yes. I love that because... Um, so the Sanaya, you know, I, I know we're not going to get in trouble by your mom when we have this conversation. But I remember, you know, listening. And I would, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was maybe, you know, over 12 years ago. But mm-hmm. I remember, like, being sad about something. And in right. the moment I put on, like, a, a sad music or something like that about me, um, like, I don't know, it will be talking about, like, love songs or something like that. But it was a la- love breakup song. Like, oh, like you everybody was, loved. You was listening to Keith Sweat. No, no. <laughs> I was listening to the people at that time, like Keisha Cole and No oh, Disrespect. Lord. Back. Uh, Mary J. Have you eat ice cream at 3 a.m. <laughs> right. in the morning. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, and the audio, I, every time I would listen to like those type of songs, the more I kept like trying to, I, the more I kept accepting like, man, not no good. Right. Mm-hmm. They just, they're going to do you bad. They're going to do wrong. They're going to treat you badly. You know, I kept. But look at you now. Amen. God bless. <laughs> All right. God Come bless. On now. Bring it home. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so Sanaya, you're right because you know it's not right. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, those things become and they they're deposited in our spirit but because everybody else is listening to it you listen to it now you know because you have a different type of anointing on your life it deals with you differently than it would Mm -hmm. deal with somebody who who isn't uh purposeful or who doesn't even have a relationship with god you know um so how to like help stop doing that yeah how how do you how does the person yeah uh okay well, I have an example. Yesterday, 
uh, I was about to put on a playlist and I was gonna listen to music and try to fall asleep. And I, the music that I was listening to and singing along to isn't exactly the best music mm -hmm. or even good music that I should be listening to. Yeah. So uh, instead of listening to that music, I put on the live from Youth Sunday. Wow. Uh, so Come just on now. you just have to. Stop doing it and replace it with something else. So if you're listening yeah. to bad songs, turn on worship music. If you're yeah. listening to, if you're watching something that isn't good, try to limit that and maybe put on something different that's not going to do it. Or just go and pray to God and, yeah, and help, ask for help. Yeah. How to limit doing those things and how to even stop completely doing those yeah. things. Yeah. 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 I love God because he will, he'll, he'll show yeah. you um, and he'll remind you how much um, of the power that you have to just, like you said earlier, to set and preference this message mm -hmm. to stop. Yeah. to just stop like you know we overcomplicate things at times and sometimes we just need to just stop doing it and then find something else to replace that those things that are good um and it's not always easy from what you know sister Sharice's uh question speaks to but yeah that's really really good it says um yeah pastor Corey, did you have anything um no 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 i think everything i think she's literally hitting it on the head for us yeah. right now just helping us to come out of these these places where we're stuck in between, you know, uh, what the world would say, a, a mm. rock and a hard place. I think I got I got a call. Actually, I can give a, a, a brief testimony, too. Okay. I got a call the other day, and the first words that I uh, received on that call was I said, hello. And they said, well, I'm, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I was like, all right, well, let's, <laughs> let's get out of this and what's yeah. going on. And they were stuck between trying to, uh, and I don't want to disclose the information, but they were stuck in between trying to make this transition, um, you know, and going into something else, but they wanted to do it like abruptly, mm -hmm. which wouldn't be good because of the responsibilities and obligations that they hold. Yeah. And so at the end of it, we, we agreed that it wouldn't be best to just step, just run out of something. And one of the things I had to tell that person was that, you know, because you entered in, now hear this real quick, because this was truly God share this and I was like wow that, that's really good God you know I had to take it in for myself yeah and he said to me to share with them that just because you entered into something the wrong way doesn't mean that you need to take the wrong approach to get out of it wow. and the old people would tell us two wrongs don't make a right wow. and so you can't try to fix something because you went in the wrong way you can't take the wrong way back out of it and so in order for you to make it all right now you have to take reasonable wise choices to fix a thing that yeah. you entered in that is you know was wrong and this young lady was saying that early when we first started off yeah when you know that you're doing something go tell god about what you're doing that's wrong and why you don't want to stop doing it okay and and at the end of the day god will reveal to you well do not take this pathway out because mm. that's going to lead to more destruction and i'm warning you now warning comes before destruction so don't go that way so i at the mm. end of it i was i was able to reason with the individual and then let them know like look you don't want to make that decision because you're going to put yourself at risk and it doesn't it doesn't make sense for you to take the other people that's attached to you down with mm, this decision that's good yeah, amen amen yeah. uh pascor we do have um yeah. deacon charles who also kind of shared like he loves how she said that you mm -hmm. know you have to limit those things until you can stop completely ask for help and sister sharice kind of echoed that it's like it's a beautiful thing that you're training your mind now yeah. to do those things yeah yeah, yeah. I love it because at, even at a young age, like at 14, I, I don't I don't remember thinking, you know, like you're, you're thinking right now. I mean, I, I had it, but I don't remember thinking it fully. I mean, I was a young man. I was, you know, playing sports and different things. And mm -hmm. so my mind wasn't quite there yet. And it's just beautiful to see the advancement the that maturity. you have yeah. uh, at this age. It's so beautiful. You know, at, at 14 years old, I, I pray that me and my wife say this all the time. We pray that we get a daughter or a child <laughs> that thinks and behaves like yourself Amen. because I told her, I was like, it's just going to happen. You know, we're pastors. It's just destined that our child oh, is going to come speak and that. give we us. don't speak that. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> speaking it, but it's what I'm saying is a compliment. It's beautiful to see this young mm -hmm. lady stand up publicly for righteousness, for salvation, beautiful. for Christ. She has a heart for God. I remember on Sunday, the Holy Spirit just overwhelming you yeah. at some point. And my wife, you know, and I both thought that because we were following along with where you were, that you were getting ready to close. And the Lord literally just led you into yeah. all these different uh, revelations. It was yeah. beautiful. 
uh, and it was truly just it, admirable to see how God had, you know, spoke some powerful things to, uh, through you, yeah. and all of us was able to receive this. Absolutely. Um, and we were just astonished by the move of God, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not... I, I'm just like, wow, I'm enamored by the fact that at 14 years old, mm -hmm. you're where you are in, in God. It's yeah. beautiful. It's really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love it. This is what it looks like to yeah. not be stuck between uh, trends and, you know, righteousness. She's yeah. choosing righteousness, not mm -hmm. trends, you know, and I, I thought that was beautiful. Yeah, and I, I know we're going to probably head over mm -hmm. and travel over to the close, but before yeah. we get there, just talking a little bit more, expounding some more on the, the message on Sunday, um, talking about, like, the Elijah's story. Can you kind of, like, you know, share with us um, the passage where, you know, he, after the sacrifice was lit yeah. or not lit for the for Baal mm -hmm. or, or for um, the God that should be served? So can you tell us what that a little bit more about that story? The ending of yeah. Okay, so um, at the end of the story, uh, so the people, they were shouting and they were dancing and stabbing themselves to get um, Baal to answer them. And they were realizing they're not getting nothing from them. And they're like, why are they not answering? And Elijah told the people, maybe um, you're God's sleeper. No, 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 show us how you did it. Maybe <laughs> you're God. Maybe you're God's sleeper. Maybe he's traveling. Right. <laughs> 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 so, um, and like I said on Sunday that our God, he doesn't, he doesn't sleep. He, he watches us. He watches over us. So, um, God, he doesn't sleep and yeah. he's always watching us. So Elijah, he knew that God was watching him and he didn't have to, you know, like stab himself or do all of that because, uh, he had faith in God and he knew that with his prayer and he knew how powerful he was, uh, because through that prayer, he knew that God was going to yeah. uh, light that sacrifice. So in our, in like relating to our own lives, um, mm, that's good. we have to believe and truly have faith in God that we're powerful because God did say that we are powerful. Um, and uh, yeah, we're very, very powerful. And yeah. we can have a prayer and we can just speak and things could happen. So uh, when you come to Christ, you, you just have to believe that you're that powerful yeah. and that what you're speaking can really come to pass. So uh, just when you go to Christ, just speak and ask him for what you want and truly believe that he's going to get it. And even just thanking him um, is good too. Yeah, yeah. You know, that that is so beautiful, um, Sister Sanaya. You know, that definition and just defining that passage is beautiful. Like, I don't know, Pastor Corey, you know, maybe you can kind of shed some light on this as well. Um, you know, one of the things I love about this particular passage as well, as you rush over to the 39 verse, is that um, when all the people saw this and saw what happened and saw the sacrifice being lit and they knew who the real God was, they, lied, they, they cried out and um, they laid prostrate, meaning that they had their faith Face, faces to the ground, yeah. um, you know, and, and such um, awe of what it is that God has done. So, you know, my question to you, the people as well as, you know, you, Sister Sanaya, you know, how many times has God shown us um, himself to be true in our life some way or another? And when that has happened, we returned and did the same thing. And so at what point are we going to, and this is what this passage is talking about, at what point are we going to see God being faithful in our lives, showing us? Up, whether it be um, on our jobs or through this pandemic, we're still alive. We um, didn't get the virus, or maybe you had, you had been in contact with the virus. You did test positive, uh, but you're still living. Some people didn't. Um, you still have your job, or you maybe you were laid off, but you still get to see the next day. Whatever it is, God has in some way shown Himself to be faithful. And at what point are we gonna fall to for, put our faces? on the floor and lay prostrate and prostrate and thank God for what he has done and cry out to the Lord. At what point do you see even you like on Sunday, if people didn't feel in that room, I know maybe online, maybe they couldn't experience what we experienced inside of the house. But if you didn't feel, I literally wanted to drop to my knees oh, on I, Sunday. The, the, the weight of God was very present. It was heavy. It was heavy. And, as I mentioned, like the, the, the altar was, was full and, um, you know, the, the spirit of the Lord was just so heavy in that place. 
Like, there's no way that I can see that happen and me to not think that God is in the midst. God is using, God is dealing, you know, like, and so at what point are we going to do that? So my question to you, uh, Sister Sanaya, is, you know, you having the opportunity to get on a pulpit and uh, minister a word where you thought that there's no one in the world I will ever do that, <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Now she said she believes she's going to do it again. Again, mm-hmm. again, and again, and again. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, do you believe at that point that, like, um, God is just as um, more real to you than he was the day before or before coming on a pulpit? And if so, why? What did that feeling look like? Because a lot of people, like as I mentioned, that young person came to me and desired that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when I was up there, I was, I thought to myself, like, okay, I'm just going to walk off of here. At one point, I wanted to just walk off. I didn't want to do it anymore because I felt like, well, everybody, they were supporting me and they were encouraging me. Yeah. But I felt like, I, I, this is not what I should be doing. <laughs> and I was like, why am I up here still? Why am I still up here? Wow. Just walk down. And when, I, um, when I get really nervous, I feel like just quitting. Yeah. So I just wanted to quit and not do it anymore. Um, but I had to keep going because some people, they needed that. And some people, yeah. and I can't just think about myself because Good. God uses people, not just for ourselves, but we have to help other people because yes. some people are going My through God. worse things that we're going through. My God. So me walking off that pulpit, um, someone could have missed out on an opportunity or they could have missed out on a blessing. So we can't just hold it for ourselves. Like if, if you're gifted and, and you're afraid to use your gifts, don't think about yourself. You have to think about other people. Come on. You could be saving someone from going to hell. You could be saving someone from killing themselves or doing something crazy. So you can be a blessing in someone's life. So you, so up there, I just thought to myself, I can't think about myself anymore. It's yeah. about other people. I could wow. be helping out other people. And helping out other people is getting them closer to God. And yeah. if I'm getting people closer to God, God is seeing me as a blessing. So that's what I thought when I was Come up there. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm about to get up and shout. Like, <laughs> and I don't need no music. My God. So wise. So wise. They said, <laughs> stop. She's <laughs> preaching again. That's what they say. Uh, no, beautiful woman of God. Listen, oh God. you, 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 you feel the weight that, you know, uh, even we as pastors and, uh, you know, pastors around the world, sometimes yeah. we are at that point too, where we're like, wow, why are we up here? Why are we why, doing why? this? And they're then they're not going to listen. Then or God, or yeah. And, and they won't listen to me or, right. They're just know. ready to go home, ready to go watch the game, ready yeah. to go do this, ready to go, you know, and the more you keep going, you'll realize that God had a purpose for you. And God yeah. did have a purpose, and he, he's fulfilling, not fulfilled, he's fulfilling that purpose through you. Like, your life is still continually fulfilling uh, the purposes and the pr- promises of God in your life. Yeah. Uh, I'm so glad that even when you were at the threshold to want to quit, that that's you it. didn't. That's it. That's, that's, what, that's what's most important because right, even... Uh, in the Bible, you'll find examples of people that followed Jesus who mm. wanted to quit, who was on the verge of quitting mm. and didn't quit, who was on the verge of giving up and didn't on, give Pastor up. Corey. And so it's beautiful because now you're aligning yourself with the weight of the gospel. Yeah. And now you know what it feels like to be a Peter, to be an, uh, an apostle Paul, to be uh, uh, a John, a Matthew, a Jonah, uh, uh, a Moses. Moses had many excuses. Mm. As great as he was, he had many excuses. <laughs> yes, Abraham had yes, some indeed. things going on. So all, all of the great... Uh, uh, Sierra had some things. Oh, yeah. And, I had and some excuses. Yes, yes. Corey <laughs> has, uh, some. <laughs> has some things. And, and every great man and woman of God that is on earth right now fulfilling the works of the gospel, we all deal with something. That is not an excuse to get into something. Come on. But it is to tell us that we need God. We'll That's never it. get to the point where we That's don't it. need him. Even mm-hmm. even unto death, we still need him. Because at, at death, he has to carry us in. Mm-hmm. And so... It's beautiful that you have that, um, just that that humbleness to the gospel. 
to to know what it feels like to get to a breaking point mm-hmm. and still to keep going in God. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. So yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And you know what? Like, as you mentioned, it's it's not about us. This is all about God. The assignment is about God. Uh, the ask, the why, the how is all about God. And I love it because even when the enemy tried to uh, shut your, your voice down, <laughs> you looked over and you said, give me my tea. <laughs> and you got your tea. <laughs> and I you want to say it. to that, too. You made your mother in that moment your Be armor your bearer. Armor bearer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people could see it online on the camera Amen. but uh she she literally walked to the edge of the pulpit and i don't know if that was your point of like i just want to get done i just yeah. want to get out of she reached her hand out like she was saying peace be still and her mom brought her a cup of tea right and she just let the lord use it so yes. <laughs> shout out to your mother for amen. being your armor bearer in that moment amen amen <laughs> and you know and she she got that tea and she kept going and and passed the court you know you said this you know you said it again today that you know listen even when she wanted to give up, she was at the th- th- threshold. Like she, she didn't. She, yeah. she kept going, and she realized. And you even echoed that that you know I kept going because I realized that it's not about me. It's not about me. And if you help just one person in that room, you have done exactly what God needed you to do. Yeah. So yeah. that's a blessing. Yes. Yes. Wow. People of God, let's just. I'm so cool. I, me too. I'm let's so cool. let's just really really be excited for the future of the church. At least. At least at this point, we do yeah. know there is one. Yeah. There, there Amen. is one. So I'm, I'm excited. You know there, that in this uh, this Gen Z one that we're still figuring out what you guys stand for, and or if you're standing for anything at all, there yeah. is one. I love it. Yeah, and you know what? Our young people, um, you know, and bless God for Sister Sanaya, you know, being the speaker. We had other young people that were working out their soul salvation. Yeah. We had um, a Sister Najai dancing. We had uh, our two young, beautiful girls uh, attempting to do praise and worship, you know. And, and they weren't, I, I mean, if they were nervous, I tell you this, I don't know if they wanted the candy after service or what, but they were dancing, they were moving, and yeah. they were singing. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I love about, um, and, and I, was, I was certainly convicted on Sunday because, um, you can ask young people to do something. They don't give you a lip. They don't give you their attitude. They don't give you their frustration. They just do it. And if that reminded me how to continue to be at, at Jesus' feet, that if he asked me to do anything, or even leadership asked me to do anything, I had to make sure that I come as a child and just go. No lip, no question, not all, not all the knowledge, not all the scriptures that we know, yeah. not all of that. Just do it. Yeah. Do obedience. And and I pray, pray for these young people um, that, you know, stood up and said, hey, I'll go. I'll do it. Um, and the desire and the hunger that they have, because I believe I'm believing God is going to have tuition paid for it just because of their sacrifices yes. and their obedience. Yes. So. Yes, yes. And and I, we have one young lady here who wants to go to UCLA. So I know we're going to. Uh, West Coast, <laughs> keep her here in we prayer. come. West Coast. <laughs> keep her in prayer. Amen. Mm-hmm. So we bless God for the young people yes. and continue to keep um, this generation in prayer yeah. as well as our world because we know what we're, we're leaning toward right now. November is right around the corner and yeah. we have a, a lot to do, a lot at state. So. Yes, yes. Huge, huge. Well, people of God, we're, we're coming to that point now where uh, we're getting ready to um, to close out here. So uh, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, I want to go ahead and give you that opportunity to sow into Altar Worship Center. Uh, we would love for you to be a, con- a contributing partner. And shout out to all of our covenant partners um, who are afar. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate your giving every uh, often that you do it. We do appreciate you. But Amen. you can give by uh, Cash App which is Cash App on um, the app. You go into the app and you type in Altar Worship Center. You can find us there or you can find us on PayPal. If you type in paypal.me forward slash Altar Worship Center, you'll pull us up and you can give that way as well through your web browser or the PayPal app. You can use yeah. the Gmail account, Altar Worship Center at Gmail account um, also to access that. And any other forms of giving that you want to give, just contact ta- contact us on the number 813-559-0978, and we'll be sure to uh, provide you further um, instruction as well. So 
Amen. Uh, please be a blessing to the ministry, if you will. Uh, we truly appreciate it. We are on the move. We're uh, certainly building up our youth, um, bu- building up our media department, building up our men's and our women's department. Amen. Uh, shout out to the men and women departments, uh, the women who are praying uh, each and every Monday consistently. night consistently. God oh, bless you. Have prayer last uh, let's Monday. put that information up. <laughs> so women of God, if you want to participate in the weekly powerful Monday night prayers, I'm telling you, sometimes I sit in myself and yeah. it's it's beautiful. Uh, our intercessors, shout out to Sister Tawana and Sister Marie, Amen. Uh, who also uh, works in our um, uh, intercessory department. And Amen. then I can't I can't forget the love of my life, Pastor Sierra, <laughs> the fireball, who also gets in there and takes takes us. I say takes us in because I'm in here as well. <laughs> All right, uh, so takes us in but every monday night uh, at 10 p.m you can be a part of that so grab that grab that information women of god and you will be blessed uh men of god we have something as well for you just contact us on the information that uh you received uh before with the offering information uh you can contact us and uh, we'll get you a part of our weekly lineup as well we're sending out devotionals and we have a dedicated gathering so grab that information if you will to be a part we are growing at the altar we are growing at the altar and we would love for you to be a part as you can see our youth are excited so bring your kids to the altar uh we are uh ready to have them and ready to host you and ready to grow our family so please bring your children to the altar it's a beautiful thing to be at the house of god amen and thank god for sister amy who led that game of um Treasure in heaven. Yes, 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 yes. Shout out, Sister Amy. Uh, God bless you. And to all uh, those that significantly helped um, the move of this ministry, shout out to Deacon Charles, who's on here, has been uh, very interactive with us tonight. God bless you, man of God. And just, you know, everyone in your respective places, we do appreciate you Amen. Uh, for everything that you do here with us at uh, Altar Worship Center. And uh, we we just really are excited and really proud of the young lady, Sister Sanaya. So can we get our hands clapping one more time for her? Amen. Amen. Look at me now. That's going to have to be your next word. Yeah, look, look at, at me, me now. now. Amen. <laughs> so it's Back such then a, they didn't want me. Now huh. I'm hot. They all on me. Hey, <laughs> hey. All right. So <laughs> she acting up. All right. Listen, um, she's getting ready to go viral, y'all. So prepare. Y'all going to know the name, Sanaya Matthews. Get, get used to it. Get used to it. Let's put it back up one more time because she's getting ready to go viral. All those people. Uh, we want to see what colleges y'all get into because you're going to get to know the name Sanaya Matthews. She said it first. So for all y'all that aren't doing it the right way, we're going to we're going to see you um, at the altar because you're going to need prayer. Amen. Amen. And she's going to be the one to pray for you. So Amen. she's getting ready to go viral. Get ready to Google her. My get ready God. to see the great things that God is getting ready to do in her life. Amen. Um, I believe we hit everything. So now you have any final remarks? Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Hey, that's okay. Anybody have any questions for her before we go? I'm going to give you uh, a, a full minute. If you have a question, go ahead and put it in the comment section now. I'm going to give you just a little bit of time. If you have one last question that you want to lend uh, to the young lady, uh, please go ahead and put it in the comments now. Yeah, and while they're doing that, um, giving them that opportunity, uh, do you have any like encouraging um, words that you can share with those individuals who are... Um, in the, in a place where they're in between two opinions, the encouragement. Um, if you're in the middle of two opinions or you can't choose anything for yourself, uh, just go to God and ask Him to help you pick a pick one of them, uh, and yeah. just know that you don't need other people to choose things for you because. Uh, those people won't be there forever to choose your decision. It, wow. But God will be there for you all the time. Uh, so if you need to help choose a decision, go to God. You don't have to go to people. Um, because the decisions that other people choose for you may not be good decisions. Uh, they may be leading you in the wrong direction. That's correct. And God will lead you yeah. to the right direction. So just uh, go to God if you need to help choosing decisions. Yeah, trust God. I, I always say that God is the best teacher. Yes, he is. You know, I love it. That was beautiful. Yeah, yes, he is. That was beautiful. Uh, Deacon Charles says, are you preaching uh, fourth Sunday? Stay stay tuned, Deacon. Stay tuned. <laughs> we got we got some more work for her, for sure. So Amen. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, awesome. Awesome. Um, anybody else? If you have anything going once, going twice, you got about uh, 15 to 30 seconds. We're going to give you the opportunity. And then we're going to go ahead and close out. So if there's anybody else, I just want to say 
um, you know, just just doing this every week has been a joy. Yeah. Uh, being able to have uh, new people to come in mm -hmm. uh, and join in because me and Pastor Sierra, we put a lot of work into these Bible studies. So we thank God for each and every one of you that each are on here uh, consistently getting in with us. We really, truly thank God for you all. It's always a pleasure to bring someone else. And what a powerhouse this young lady yes. is becoming. Amen. Uh, so, man, she came in and, and really... Uh, drop some nuggets on us tonight. Yes, <laughs> so she really just kind of stirred up the water, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm very happy about it, and, and God is as well. So mm -hmm. it looks like I think everyone is satisfied. Uh, a lot of hearts, a lot of claps, a lot of amens. Um, so listen, uh, guys, continue to stay in with us. Stay contacted with us. Um, we're on the move uh, next month. We got some exciting things going on as yeah. well. So you guys want to be a part of that and uh, more things to come. Just stay stay in with us on our um, Facebook page. Uh, Instagram is on the way and yeah. YouTube is uh, already kicking up as well. So stay in with us and uh, we're, we're, yeah. we're inspired. So uh, we're going to give this opportunity uh, to Sister Sanaya, if you will, just give us our closing prayer and uh, we'll close out from there. Um, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, thank you for allowing us to come on Bible study today. Yes, God. Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning and even have the ability to speak or for those online to have the ability to type, oh God. Yes, thank Lord. you for just blessing us um, with everything, Lord God. Thank you for just blessing us to even be on this earth. Thank you for taking your time creating us, Lord God. And I pray that for everyone who came to this Bible study, Lord God, that they learned something new. And they know that they don't have to um, waver between two opinions, Lord God. And they yes. will come to you if they're between two opinions, Lord God. And you will lead them the right direction. And we yes, don't have Lord. to seek um, a, we don't have to seek judgment from people. And we can go to you. Yes. So we're thanking you right now, Jesus, for everything that you're doing in our lives. And thank you for everyone who's on live, Lord God. I pray that yes, you Lord. bless them and you continue to watch over them, Lord God. And thank you for just favoring us, Lord God, and waking us up this morning and just putting breath in our bodies, Lord God. Because some people didn't wake up this morning, Lord God, but you gave us another day, Lord God. Yes, Lord. And we are excited for what you're doing for us, Lord God. And we're excited for Altar Worship Center and how you're going to oh, make yes. us mega, oh God. Thank you so much for our youth, Lord God. Thank you yes. for allowing us. And I pray that our youth will grow, Lord God. And for yes, those God. who are scared, Lord God, and they're nervous, Lord Jesus, yes, that they God. will come to you, Lord God. And thank you for allowing me to be an example, Lord God. Yes, God. And I pray that I encourage someone today, Lord God, that they can do anything through you, Lord God. Yes, Lord. And I pray that you just continue to lead us the right way, Lord God. And if we need anything, that we will go to you when, yes, we, when we're hurt, when we're happy, when we're sad. We'll go to you for everything, Lord God. And for yes, those God. sins that we feel like we can't control those sins that we feel like we have to do those sins that we feel like it's a must to make i pray that you will help us to limit those sins and to make, move those sins out of our lives lord god. Yes, god and i rebuke any sins that we are gonna do later even tomorrow oh god yes, yes, and i pray that we don't sin lord god and I pray that you just continue to watch over us, Lord God. And when yes, we Lord. want to sin, we will think about you, Jesus, just watching us. Is that something that we want to do? Is that something going to bless us? Is that something yes, that's going to benefit us or benefit anyone around us, Lord yes, Jesus? Yes. So I just pray that we will do right in your sight, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And that we will just um, follow your commandments and we will just follow you, Jesus. We'll be yes, an example of you. When people see us, they will see that we love you, Jesus. Yes, so I just Lord. pray that you continue to watch over us and watch over everyone on the live Lord Jesus and I just pray that you bless them and you continue to watch over them and you put you put strength in their body Lord God and I just pray that you help them to get through the rest of the week and it won't be tough Lord God because they have you if they're feeling anything yes, they go to you Lord. Lord Jesus and I just pray that everyone who's going to work tomorrow everyone who's going to school tomorrow that they just have a great day and for yes. those who don't go to work or don't go to school Jesus I just pray that you still just bless them and watch over them and have them, allow them to have a great week yes, God. and I just pray that for the rest of this week, for the rest of this month, and for the rest of this year, yes, that you would bless us tremendously, and you would just, you would just surprise us this year, Lord Jesus. Yes. For those who think that our year is going to be rough and it's not going to be good, Lord Jesus, yes, that you would surprise us with a mighty blessing over this year, oh God. And I just pray that it would be awesome, the best 2020 we ever had. Yes. Lord. And we're praying and believing this in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome prayer. Beautiful prayer. Listen, people of God, we'll see you again on Sunday morning at 1030. Please, mm -hmm. please, please interact with us and we'll see you uh, there. God bless you all. God bless you and all. And we love you so much. We love you. Till next time. Toodles. <laughs>